Welcome to Large Scale RC Nation. This is Brandon, and today we're going over the Mod Fiscal Gas Kill Switch. The first kill switch that we have today is the Mod Fiscal Gas Kill Switch. Part number is 19930. This kill switch will hook up to any open channel that you have available on your receiver. The ways to kill your large scale car is to program an auxiliary channel open on your transmitter and push the button, which will kill the car. The second one will be voltage loss due to your radio losing battery or your car itself or total signal loss. The second style kill switch is the non-aux style. The part number on this is 19935. And the difference of this one is if you do not have a open channel available on your receiver, you will use this Y splitter to connect in the mod kill switch. You will turn off this kill switch by powering off your radio, voltage loss, which would be either in your car or your transmitter, or total signal loss. Included in your mod Fiscal kill switch is the kill switch itself, the LED clip that will connect to your LED, stickers, zip ties, and your new kill switch that will replace your stock one and that will connect to the coil, and instructions on how to install. Included in the non-auxiliary mod Fiscal gas kill switch is your kill switch wiring harness, the LED clip that connects to your LED light, the zip ties that install stickers, the instructions, and a Y splitter for your receiver. This mod kill switch has one purpose, to reliably kill your Fiscal engine quickly and safely. A kill switch that you can trust in from beginning to the end of your race. This simple design has no dip switches as you can see. No parameters to choose from. All you do is simply plug and play. You're probably asking yourself, why pick the mod kill switch over the competitor's kill switch? There's a few reasons and let's talk about it. For one, the competitor kill switch has dip switches on it, which is gonna make it more difficult, time consuming, and frustrating when doing the install, where the mod kill switch is a simple plug and play. The second reason is durability. While testing with the competitor's kill switch, I found that this fell within one month of usage. I was running a two day weekend race and prior to the second day of race, this malfunctioned on me where I lost money in race, time, and having to purchase another kill switch. With the mod kill switch, it has zero failures recorded and you will have a 100% guarantee of refund or a return if it does fail on you. The third reason is cost. This may be initially a little bit more expensive when purchasing than the competitor's one, but if you have failure rate like I have with this, you'll be purchasing multiple kill switches, which will not only equal the same amount as this, but you will also be wasting your time driving to your hobby store or ordering multiple kill switches and having to install them where you have a simple plug, one and done. The reason why this mod kill switch should be one of the first things that you purchase for your Fisco is for the fact of runaways. Runaways can be caused from low battery or voltage loss in your car or your transmitter, signal loss from running your car too far away from your receiver, or a issue or malfunction of anything of your electronics like a throttle servo being stuck wide open. Protect your investment. These large scale vehicles are in the thousands of dollars and to order one of these will protect it from it ever running away on you. The weight of this kill switch is 10 grams on the unit itself and is believed to be the lightest one on the market. It also is probably the smallest one on the market as it is smaller than a nickel. Mod has a satisfaction guarantee. This is guaranteed to work with your Fisco as long as you have an ignition coil along with a controller that has the auxiliary inputs and a menu control. Trust is key and if Mod Racing Kill Switch does not respond or perform to its full function properly, simply send it back for a full return or a replacement. The Mod Kill Switch has been tested for over a year now 
It has been approved and tested on 2S radio systems and servos, 4S big high-tech with regulator to receiver, both reed and piston port motors, and flawless zero failure rate in racing situations. Now I'm going to demonstrate how to install these two different style kill switches. Let's jump into the build. You will start by removing the OEM kill switch. And now we will install the mod kill switch. So now that we've installed the wires on our coil, it doesn't matter which side goes on which. Now we'll replace the cover. We'll install the screw on the front. And now we're gonna route this wire. So we're gonna stick the wire down here by the carburetor and it will come out on the bottom side as you can see here you're going to make sure that the tabs are in the slots and we'll replace our fan cover you'll stick the kill switch into the fan cover as shown here with the tabs up and down vertically which will give clearance to the coil wire. And you're gonna make sure that your wires are up and out of the way of the fan. And now we'll replace our screws. Now that we've installed all the screws on the fan shroud, We've routed our wire underneath the carburetor and secured it to the front mount plate with the zip tie that is provided. You may also secure it to one of the fins on your crankcase vent. I'm running the outer wear, so we're gonna keep it secured here. Now it's time to put it in the truck. Now that we have the motor back in the truck, you will trace your wire underneath the battery tray. There is a mounting bolt from the battery tray that goes to the chassis. You will run it behind that and secure it with the provided zip tie to this mounting point right here. This will keep any moving parts away from the wire and cutting it. Here you can see in this shot that the wire is traced around this post from the battery tray mount. And the wire comes up and is secured here. That way it keeps it away from any moving parts. We will now move on to installing the front portion of our kill switch harness. Remove the tray off the receiver and you will remove these two millimeter bolts on your on off switch. We will now take this portion of the kill switch and run our red connector down where the wires go with the on off switch. All right, you can see we ran the black and red braided wire down here through the hole where all our other wires are leading in and we will pull it out to this side and connect it to the motor side of the wiring harness. Now that we have plugged in the two harnesses together we will take the zip tie that is provided place it in the hole on the receiver tray and secure it with the other zip tie that is provided. This will keep all your wires free from any moving parts and out of the way. And if you need to disconnect your kill switch, you just disconnect it right here. The black wire will go into any open slot on your receiver. So we will place this in channel three, which I have available. If you have a receiver that is completely full, you will run the non-aux style, which comes with the Y splitter. You will simply remove one of the servos from the receiver. 
place it in the splitter. Place your mod kill switch in the other side of the splitter of the female. Install the male in into your receiver. It's as simple as that and now you're ready to go. And now we just need to drill the hole for the LED. You will need an eight millimeter bit to install. And let's go ahead and drill this in. With the hole drilled, we will now take our LED clip and place it right into our eight millimeter hole. Take your LED, push it in from the bottom. Until it's all the way in. Now that we have our LED installed, we will now reinstall the two millimeter screws on our on off switch. If you decided to go with the mounting spot that I have chosen. Make sure that you don't over tighten the screws. With that installed, all that's left now is to install the connector onto our receiver of any open channel that you desire. We now have it installed in channel three. We will place our mod kill switch into our receiver tray. When mounting your LED light indicator, make sure that you put it in a place that you like best. Uh, it's recommended to place it in the side of the receiver box as the clip and the cover will get in the way. This is where I wanted it. Place it wherever you like. You can put it in the cover, but uh, know that the wires will be connected to this cover so you won't be able to completely remove it out of the way. So uh, recommended to put on the side of the box or wherever you desire to put it. With your transmitter turned on, you will now turn on your car and verify that the LED is lit up. You will need to program a channel on your controller. As you can see, I push the switch here and it turns off the LED light. You also want to test it by powering off your transmitter. And you can see that it's now blinking and that means it will cut your engine. As soon as you turn it back on, now it lights back up again.